Good morning, breakfast of champions. How is everyone doing wherever you are in the world? Good morning to you, good evening, good afternoon. Um, hope everyone is doing well. My name is Harlan, certified life coach, servant leader of the gospel. Uh, I am here to help you get out of your way. We are here to have real conversation uh, with real people, to get real solutions, to get real encouragement, to get sharpened for life. And I am so glad that you're here and today, again, we'll be still talking about praying for our partners on every level. For those of you that may be not married, maybe you are dating, maybe you are looking to uh, be married at some point. Hopefully you are. Hopefully if you're dating, you're dating successfully, you're dating the right way. We're here to help you understand all of that. So be sure to pop in your questions, uh, pop in your feedback so we can address, so we can respond. Um, you never know. And we are here to make sure that you get some clarity. And that's the one of the things that we, most of the times in life we miss, we miss getting some clarity. We miss getting that understanding, getting those questions answered uh, to things that we need really answered. And the best way to do that is to simply ask. I mean, it's always good to just ask what you need to know. You, uh, they, there's a saying that, you know, quiet mouths, uh, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. Well, when you don't open up and ask a question, you don't find answers. You're stuck trying to figure it out. And that's not the way you're supposed to do. You know, we, we're not created to do this, this, this wonderful life alone. We are created to help one another. We're created to be there for one another. We're created to, to use our, our abilities, gifts, talents, uh, whatever we have, time, love, money, everything that we have, we use, it's, it's for us to use, to work together because what one doesn't have, another has, and we complete each other, whether that be uh, personal, whether that be uh, in a, in a, intimate, uh, close relationship, uh, such as marriage, whether that be in business or whether that be in just um, a, a general family a setting, uh, friends, it doesn't matter. Whatever we, whatever one has, then and whatever one doesn't have, another has. And we take all the things that we have, that's why we can, can write and plan and construct uh, buildings and cars and homes and all of the things that we do, we, it takes all of our gifts, all of our knowledge, all of our ability, all of our understanding. And we come together as groups and we put those things together. We make a plan, we can structure it, we can count up the course and we can build it and get it done. And that's the same thing when we're talking about building a partnership for life, which that's the most important one that you can ever have there's no other relationship on the earth that is more important than you and your spouse yes most people because there's not a great examples maybe their parents weren't great examples maybe their parents didn't um weren't on the same page maybe their parents did weren't you know one parent uh have faith one doesn't or maybe their parents didn't you know you didn't see parents uh, loving each other, praying with each other, praying for each other, 
maybe you didn't see things like that. Maybe you didn't see, you know, um, your parents laughing with each other, playing with each other, dating each other, flirting with each other, um, holding hands, enjoying each other. Maybe you didn't see them on their knees and praying for you, praying for each other. So those are the things why we end up with, um, you know, when, when a person doesn't think that they need someone or they think they have to be independent, you know, or they don't teach their child a certain thing, it's because they didn't see it. And sometimes when we don't see things, we don't think it exists. Just like, you know, you, you may think um, a good man doesn't exist. A man may think a good woman doesn't exist. And so when we're not used to praying for each other, we're not used to fighting with each other for the same cause, you know, destroying those things that would come against us, we end up fighting against each other. We're pointing the blame the wrong direction. We're pointing our, our, our words, our thoughts, our emotions. We, our, we're pointing it the wrong direction because we keep thinking that it's the other person on the sitting beside me or across from me. It's their fault that you know a certain thing is not what it should be, or my life is is a certain way. They're thinking that, and that's not the case. The case is just simply the fact that we have to understand that we come together to become one. For the two shall be joined together and become one flesh. And so most people are spending that time trying to become one flesh in the wrong. Uh, circumstances and then get married and then don't come together as one under that circumstance. And so that's all backwards, guys. That's all backwards. So when we, I, I, I find that when we do things in the proper order, in the proper context, when we do it God's way, according to his will, according to his design, then we can do it successfully. We can do it right. Everyone is happy. Everyone is fulfilled. Everyone is content in the relationship. Both of you, there's no, well, one of us is, is, is happy and one of us is not. That's not how it works. You can't be one and be two. You have to come together what, 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 what he feels she should feel, what she feels he should feel. It's because you, you, there's no way that my, my partner, my wife, my spouse could be hurting and it doesn't bother me. It doesn't, I don't feel it. I don't care. I don't, it doesn't, you know, until whatever it is, until it is what it's supposed to be, then that, how can I be content? Because that's the other half of me. That's the part that completes me. And so when we understand that we complete each other, see, love comes together to complete, not to compete. And so many times and we, if we don't understand, we'll spend our time competing with the one that we say we love. We, but we're not competing in the right way. Compete if you want to. If you want to have fun in a in a competitive way, then out serve me, out uh, do beat me. You know, doing something for you, that type of thing. That that's okay. We're having fun. You know, um, you whatever you did, you want to do nice for me. Whatever I want to do nice for you. Why don't we? If we're gonna do something and we're going to try to try to be first doing it, be first. Be found caught, found first serving, doing something wonderful that helps your spouse out. You do it at work. You, you go to work and you, you, you help make things a certain way for the office or for the company. And you make these, these companies wealthy. You make them very happy with the things that you've done, the things that you've set in place with your gifts, your service. You're the first one at the office. You're the last one to leave. But you didn't tell everybody you were running away from your home and then you were hitting to get back home. That's why you were first. You were first at the office out of the right heart. Be first at the office out of the right heart, not because you're running away from your spouse or not because you hate to go back home to them. So I find that when we're praying for one another, we understand that we don't, we don't have time to complain. And then those of us that, if our spouse says something and in in makes us aware that there is a complaint, that there is a, a problem, there is an issue, there is something that's bothering your spouse and there's something that they're asking you to do different, 
Well, if that be the case, the worst thing you can do is, is pretend that they're not telling you something or put up your guard and think, oh, well, and then you think that you need to throw out assaults at them because they're telling you something that is bothering them that you may be doing or saying some action or whatever it is. The, what you should be doing is you should be taking it in and saying, hmm, let me observe myself and see if I'm doing that because that's not my desire, no intent towards my spouse. So we should take it, pray about it. Lord, if there be anything that I'm doing, my spouse has come to me and, and shared with me that thus and so is, is the problem, that it's bothering them, that this is an issue, that this is making them, uh, I'm, I'm hurting them, I'm crushing them, I am, um, I'm making them uncomfortable, I'm doing something that is, is causing them uh, turmoil in their heart and so or in their lives it's causing us it's causing friction it, it's causing us to maybe have a breach in our relationship where it's affecting our communication it's affecting our our uh, sex life it's affecting our prayer life it's affecting how we our finances so it's affecting our health so we need to be humble enough to know that when someone tells me something, I, I can't walk around and think like, oh, well, I know I'm not wrong. I know I didn't do, stop it. We don't need to act as though we didn't do something or that we, this person doesn't have a legitimate um, concern. So the best thing for me to be do would be to say, you know, okay, well, um, I'm sorry that that is, you know, what's what you perceived you know, coming from me or what I didn't realize that I was doing uh, thus and so. So um, I received that. I will, I will ponder that and I will definitely, um, you know, well, I'll respond to you if I, you know, can see that that is, if I, when I, you know, take inventory of myself, if I can see that that is something that I am doing. So you say that when I talk to you, I talk to you like I don't love you. You said that when I sit near you, I sit like I really don't want to be next to you. You say that when we go in public, I ignore you and I pay attention to everyone else, but I'm not paying attention to you that I leave you and it kind of I act like I'm not really with you. You you you're saying that I speak negative about you. Um, when we're in conversations or in public with other people, you're saying I take shots at you. Oh, you, you're saying that I talk negative about you to our kids. So these are all things that are detrimental to a relationship. You can't do and say things that hurt your spouse and expect to have an intimate bond with your spouse. You can't expect a person to want to hold your hand or, or, or be, you know, or huggy up with you when they feel like you disrespect them. They feel like you don't love them. They feel like you don't like them. They feel like you mistreat them. So these are all the reasons why we need to pray together so that we can stay in love together. And that we don't, we're not waking up saying, oh, we've fallen out of love. You can't fall out of love. And you don't fall in love. You choose love. And just like God chose you, you choose him back. Well, that's the same thing with your spouse. You, your, your husband chose you. You chose him back. He's the one that needed to say, will you, can I have a conversation with you? He's the one that needed to say, will you be my girlfriend? He's the one that needed to say, will you marry me? Not the other way around. If you did it the other way around, you're out of order. And you then you can't be surprised when the things don't go a certain way. There is an order. God has an order. It is, it is, it is, and it has to stay in its proper context. So if I want to help my spouse, I need to pray for my spouse. And me praying for my spouse is not talking at my spouse to God. It's not me uh, complaining 
to God about my spouse. It's not me taking shots with when I'm talking to God about my spouse, uh, putting them down or criticizing them or pointing blame. You see, that was the thing that happened in the garden. Adam blamed Eve, then Eve blamed the devil. Nobody said I was wrong. And that's the part that really upset God because he didn't want to be accountable. Even Adam and Eve didn't want to be accountable for what they had done. Adam never said I was wrong. Eve never said I was wrong. They both just pointed fingers. One, one, one pointed, Adam pointed at God and Eve, and then Eve pointed at the, at the devil. But nobody said, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I repent. No one said that. And so this is what happens when, why, when the Bible says that one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. Now, just imagine if you and your spouse both, both love God, you both pray, you both have a relationship with the Father, because that's the way marriage is supposed to be. We're not even supposed to be married and unsaved. We're supposed to be saved and in that covenant with God and one another, the three court strand that's not easily broken. So if we do it the right way, then we are both going to be communing with God. We're going to be worshiping uh, together. We're going to be praying together. Now, I'm not saying you have to pray together all the time, but it should be something that you do because that's what we have to do. It shouldn't be something that does not exist. We need to, just like we, I can, now I know, in, the reason I say that, I know individually, wherever you are, you're not always with your spouse and you can pray anytime. That's the wonderful thing about having a real relationship with God. It's not a religion. It's a real relationship with my father, my Lord, my father, my God, my savior, my king. He's everything. And so if I know that I can talk to him, whether I'm opening my mouth or not, if I'm at work, I can always talk to him by the spirit. Or I can talk to him while I'm driving my car. I can talk to him while I'm taking a walk. Uh, anywhere, anytime. That's the wonderful thing about God. We don't have a certain time, a certain way, a certain direction, any of those things. We just pray. And it doesn't have to be a long prayer. It could be simply, Lord, help me. It could be simply, Lord, thank you for helping my spouse. Lord, thank you for helping my children. Thank you for helping my, my, my parents. Thank you for helping my siblings. Lord. It could be, a sh it's, it's as short as that. That's the wonderful thing about God. He doesn't need long words. He doesn't need you to put words in a certain way to feel like you're, you have some type of, you got to come to him with some type of certified or special dialect. All he wants you to do is come to him with a pure heart, come to him in spirit and in truth, because you really love him. You really serve him. You love him with all your heart, all your, all your mind, your soul, your strength. You really love your neighbor as yourself. You truly love your spouse. And when you come to God, God says, one person can put a thousand to flight. A thousand what? A thousand demonic principalities. Two can put 10,000 to flight. Now just imagine that, and then you multiply that and you've taught your kids how to pray. That is an awesome household. That is a household that protects the neighborhood. The neighborhood, the demonic principalities can't even function in that neighborhood because you got four, five people, however many kids you have that are praying, that know how to pray and that know how to, to speak the word of God over that household, that know how to, to declare Psalm 91 God's protection over that household. Psalm 23, God's leading and protection and, and covering and provision over that household that know how to pray. The, 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 the prayer that, that Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be up your name, your kingdom come. His kingdom is, is in you. Your will be done. That means his will is done in my life. I obey his will. 
I welcome his will, his wisdom, his way, his desire, his design to operate in my life, not my flesh will, not my feelings, not my emotions, but the spirit of God that lives in me, I want him to rule. And so when I'm praying for my partner, I'm praying, Lord, I thank you that my wife is a virtuous woman. I thank you, Lord, that she wakes up early, seeks your face, Lord, and that she wakes up and she prays for our family. She's, Lord, when she's she's worshiping in our house and she's, uh, she's setting the atmosphere where she is. And then your wife is praying, Lord, I thank you that I, I have a husband that wakes up early and seeks your face and he prays for our family. Lord, I, I can hear him talking to you about me. Oh, how he loves me, Lord. He talks to me the way that you talk about me, Lord. I, the words that I, he speaks to me and he washes me with the water of the word according to, to what you've taught us in Ephesians, Lord. I hear him talking to you and he's speaking well of me. I, I hear him thanking you for keeping me whole in my mind, in my body, my soul, my spirit, for keeping, keeping me healthy, for giving me favor in my business, in my job. Lord, I hear my wife praying for my business, praying for my, my career, praying for the, the, the doors to open for my life and the, and the purpose and the plan that you have on my life. I hear her binding the enemy out of my life and away from me, Lord, that when I go in and when I come out that I'm blessed and that I'm protected and that, I, that, that the enemy can't touch me. Lord, I hear my, my spouse praying for our kids and Lord, that they would, that they praying for their mind and praying that they, you know, speaking life over them, that they love obedience and they, they hate disobedience and they love your will and they, they hate everything that is, that is carnal, but they love the things of the spirit. They love doing your will. When we pray for our partners, all we have to simply do is, is say what God says about them and not what you're feeling at that moment. Not you being negative towards them because you didn't like something that they did. Y'all type in the chat, talk to me. Um, you know, pop any questions or your, your feedback, whatever you want to say in there. But you, you are not complaining because see, that's the last thing I need to do. I'm not helping the situation. And it's good for us to, you know, just like we said, when we pray, we're talking and we're having a conversation with God. When you're having a conversation with your spouse, that's when the two of you can sit there and you can hold, you know, hands and get on your knees, bow before God and talk to God about each other. You can take times. Wife, you pray over your husband, pray. Lord, I thank you that, that my husband loves me the way that, that, that you love the church, Lord. I thank you that he's a man after your heart. I thank you that, that he, he stays away from evil. He loves what is righteous. He loves doing what is good. He loves uh, serving and, and doing your will. He loves serving our family. He, he, he gives everything for our family. He, 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 he doesn't hold back anything. I don't feel like, Lord, I don't believe that there's, there's one part of him that he holds back from me. But I believe he gives everything the way that you gave everything for us, Lord. I, I, I believe that. I believe that he gives everything for our family. I believe that he's faithful from home and abroad, Lord, that when he goes out, he's the same man that he is at home, that he is at worship. Lord, I thank you that my wife is the same faithful woman that when she's uh, when we in your presence and we're worshiping as a, whether we're in a congregation or whether we're at home, Lord, she's the same virtuous woman. She, she speaks so, so pleasant, so mild. Her words are life. Her words are, are full of love. And in the way she compliments me, the way that she adores me, she honors and respects and trusts me. Lord, I feel like I can just, just take over the world because I know that she's right there with me. I know that she she supports me in everything that I do. I thank you for a supportive wife. I thank you for a loving wife. She's so kind to me. She's always doing nice things for me. She's always telling me how what a, what a good man I am. And that, that really boosts my confidence. It makes me feel like I can do anything. 
because I know she's right by my side. She has my back. She's praying for me. Lord, I thank you that, Lord, that she's praying for me. She's always, always considering me. Lord, I thank you that my husband is always, he always puts me first. Lord, I thank you, my wife, she always puts me first. She always does the right thing by me. She always, the way she talks to me, I can tell that she just, she's been in your presence. The way my husband talks to me, I can tell he's been in your presence, how he loves me, how his words are, are so, they, they are life and their power. I feel so so strong and so secure when I'm around him, Lord. And, and, and even when he's not here, I can still, just like I feel your presence all the time, I, he's still here. His presence is still here when, when he's not here. And, and the children, you know, they know when, when their father, they know that their father has been praying for them. They can, they, they can tell when they go to school. They can tell when they're living their lives. They can tell when they, when they even when they, even though they live in another city, another state, whatever. They can tell. They know that their father, their mother is praying for them. They can, they can feel your spirit moving around them in their lives, in their heart. Lord, I thank you for a spouse that that just never, never wavers, always faithful. Always abounding in the word of the Lord. Always about your business. Always imitating you. Always growing in your image. Every day. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even think of a complaint because I just, I see them living according to your will. And it just makes me better. It makes me stronger. It helps, it, it boosts my faith, Lord. Because they are, I can see how faithful they are, Lord. I can, I, I mean, I just, I can, when I get up and I'm moving around and I can hear my wife uh, just singing a worship while she's in the kitchen and, 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 she, and Lord, I can hear my husband just singing praises to you while he's, while he's moving around and, 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 and doing things, Lord, I can, I can hear him uh, in his prayer closet. Lord, I can hear my wife in her prayer closet. And, and the children, Lord, they can hear us in the prayer closet. And sometimes they just come in and just sit with us and they just bow with us. And because that's the tone of the house when you have praying partners. When we lift each other up in prayer, we are shielding our spouse from the darts, the fiery darts of the enemy. We are strengthening our spouse for every day, the daily journey of this life. It makes it easier to be wherever you are, at home and abroad, but especially at home because home is supposed to be a place of peace. Home is not supposed to be a place of turmoil. Your life is not supposed to be a place of turmoil. And when you're truly living the will of God, you're truly obeying the will of God. You're truly seeking God's face, not his hand. Because see, when you seek his face, you already have his hand. Because the father wants to give you everything that you need for livelihood and godliness, which he has already done. When he said it is finished, that means that everything that he would need to do is already done. The rest of it is you walking it out. And when you choose to walk in power with your spouse, <laughs> you, are, you are creating a dynamic household. You're creating a household where when people, when you know, when people walk by your house outside, they can feel the Holy Spirit. They don't know what they may not know what it is. They may, they may begin, they may feel uplifted. They may feel convicted. They may, they may be drawn. I said, Lord, every time I walk by this house, I'm going on my walk. Lord, I feel, I don't even, they may not even know God, but they may become, maybe the Lord starts ministering to them because of the prayers of you and your spouse. The, the neighborhood don't know that it's because the neighborhood is, is safe and protected because of you and your spouse, because you and your spouse are praying over the neighborhood. You're, chasing, you're putting 10,000 to flight and then you're teaching, your, you taught your kids how to pray. So now you're putting more, even more, principalities of flight they can't even come in the neighborhood they can't even come in your read in your area because you 
because you're praying. Marriages are not being attacked because you and your spouse are, you got the neighborhood on lock with Jesus because you're praying. You're praying and you're interceding for all households and all marriages. Lord, do for my neighbors as, as you're doing for us, Lord. You're not being selfish. So people the next door to you are not moving out because they're separating and divorcing. So children are not acting up because they're not acting out because their families are being whole. This is the power of prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer moves mountains. Prayers keep God operating for you and it keeps the enemy frustrated. It keeps the enemy at bay because you're speaking the word. You're not speaking your feelings, but you pray according to the word of God. So when you pray, it's best that you pray scripture if you're not praying in your prayer language, which the Bible tells us, it's, it suggests to us, it tells us it's better if we pray in our prayer language. Somebody says, what is your prayer language? That means that you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and you speak in other tongues because the enemy does not know what you're saying when you're praying in your prayer language. That's why it's better to pray in your prayer language. If you don't have your prayer language, then that means that you just need to simply receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. It's not something you have to ask for. You just have to receive it. And if you don't understand that, then uh, hopefully you will, um, you know, at a, if you can uh, reach uh, myself or someone at another time who, who knows about that, we can explain to you or help you uh, receive that so that you have the full power of God operating in you. But when two partners, when two spouse, when a spouse, a husband and a wife are both filled with God's Holy Spirit. Now understand that we, you know, the Spirit is, is dwelling in us uh, when we receive the Lord Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, but he wants us to receive the fullness of that. And uh, otherwise, you don't hold him at bay and say, I'm stopping right here. But you want the whole thing. You don't want, uh, I don't want a sample, Lord. I want all of it because I give you all of me. And so that's what it is when, you know, it's just like when we when we're in a relationship with God, we can't be, Lord, I just give you uh, fifty percent of me. God doesn't do partial things; He only does things one hundred percent. God says, "I give you everything." God gave every. Thing. He didn't withhold anything. And we sing the song, some of the songs we sing, we, we sing the song withholding nothing. That's what God wants. He wants you to give him everything. He doesn't want you to withhold anything from him. And when the Bible says that God will not withhold any good thing from them that walk uprightly. And so think about this right here. When you are with your spouse, uh, make sure you mute your phones, guys. Mute your phones. Um, make sure that when you are with your when you're with your spouse, you don't hold back from them. You don't. Well, I, I don't want to give them this part of me. I don't want to give them everything because the last one, the last one. You can't live your life on the last one. You can't live your life on what your mom or dad did not do right or how their relationship was. See, the thing about when we step into relationship with the Lord, our God, he wants us to give our complete self to him because he wants to mold you in his image by his spirit. He wants your, your mind, your heart to be his heart. So we're giving him this old fleshly stony heart and we're receiving that wonderful heart that he gives us by his spirit, his heart, his way of thinking, his, his way of doing, his way of being. We're, we're coming into unity with him. And so it's the same thing with our spouse. You can't go into that relationship. Well, I don't, I don't feel like praying for them. I don't feel like blessing them. I don't feel like serving them. 
I don't feel like submitting to them. I don't feel like honoring them. I don't know if I can trust them. If you do those things, you're killing everything that you're saying you want to build. If you want to be happy, if you want love to rule, then you've got to come into that relationship for all the right reasons and willing to give everything. It doesn't work on a partial. That's the same thing as you trying to live in an apartment and, oh, I'm going to live at the house sometimes, but I'm going to keep me an apartment over here. That's not a marriage. That's not a relationship. You're, you're afraid to give everything. And that's why we have to have a made up mind that when we're coming into partnership, we give everything. It doesn't matter if we've been married before, we have a blended family, we give everything. It's no more my, it's not my kids, your kids, our kids, our family. It's no stepdads, no stepmoms. It's just mom and dad. We under kids know that they have a parent. They know they have uh, a, a, a biological mother and a, and their father has a, a new wife. It doesn't have to be complicated, guys. Keep it simple. Pray for one another. Pray for your ex-spouse if you've been married before and, you've, and you're remarried. You have to pray for them. They're your, they're your kid's uh, parent too. And you want their household to be whole just as well as yours is whole. And that's why we pray together because we want to keep the enemy out of our marriage. It's so important. That when we when we're talking to God, it's a, I, I can't go to God and be all nice and and act like I'm submissive and humble and and all these things. And then when I'm sitting and I'm talking to you, I don't sound like that. I should sound to you the same way that when I'm talking to God, I, I honor God, I I adore Him, I worship and reverence Him. So when I'm talking to you, I should sound that same loving way. I should sound that same compassionate way. I should sound that same humble way. I should sound like God is talking to you. That's the way the love should flow from me. The way when I touch your hand, when we when we go to pray or when we're just having conversation, when we're just talking, when we're laughing, when we're playing, when we're flirting, whether we're praying or not, we're always in communion with one another and we're always in communion with God. And here's one of the most important things that people forget. There's a scripture that Jesus talks about and he says that and when he's talking, he says, uh, when he's talking about the, the way that we live this life and the way that we serve and how we're going to be uh, measured, you know, when, when he looks at us and he says that you'll say to me, you know, when, when, when I was in, you know, prison, you, did you visit me when I was sick? Did you, did you, did you see about me when I was hungry? Did you feed me? And Jesus said, in as much as you have done to the least of any of these, so let me put that in layman's term, whatever you have done to any person, you are doing it to me. If you understood that when you are talking to your spouse, that whatever you're saying to them, whatever you're doing to them, you're doing it unto the Lord. Your, your words that you're, if you're telling your spouse that they are stupid and that they are worthless and they get on your nerves and they make you sick, you're talking to God. The reason that you say that to your spouse is because you don't understand that you're talking to God. You think that you're talking to just your husband. You think that you're just talking to your wife. God said, whatever you have done to the least of any of these, whatever you've done to your children, whatever you've done or said to your, your neighbor, your coworkers, you are doing it to God. If people really understood that, do you think that they would mistreat we would mistreat each other? Absolutely not. But we think that we're just doing that to the person. And then we think that we're going to go and talk to God. And God is like, I'm not even talking to you. I'm not even responding to you because 
you just dishonored me. Look what you, you got to get it right with your spouse. You got to repent. You got to apologize to them. You got to ask for forgiveness. You are dishonoring them and you're dishonoring me. And people think that they just, I was just mean to my spouse. No, you were mean to God. Everything that you do, everything that you say, there's not a word that you speak that you won't be held accountable for. Not one word. Your actions, you, ha we, you have to be accountable for them. And if you really understood that what you're doing to your spouse, what you're saying, how you serve or how you refuse to serve, how you honor or how you refuse to honor, how you respect or how you refuse to respect, how you love or refuse to love, you're doing that directly to the Lord, our God. Let that sink in. Let that sink in that when that that should help you to understand not to complain, not to complain about your spouse, not to complain about your children, not to complain about your workers, your 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 employees, uh, your your employer, whoever. Your words are not helping if you're complaining. If there is a complaint, you should be talking to that person, sharing that with them, what your concern your problem, your issue is, and then find a way to for us to resolve it. But me going to this other person and complaining about my spouse, me going over here to my, my mother and my father complaining about my spouse, going over here to my coworkers complaining about my spouse, going over here and thinking that I'm going to talk to God and, and complain about my spouse. And God is like, I'm not trying to hear that. You, you, you know that that's not right, you gotta come correct. Matter of fact, you can't even come talk to me if you over here at odds with your spouse. God said, your prayers are hindered. They're not being heard and answered because you need to get it right. Some of us don't understand that the things that are operating in our lives that are, are, that are not working is because we are not doing right by our spouse. And God is like, I can't even honor your prayers until you get it right with your spouse. How can you expect to come to me and act as though you love me when you're not loving your neighbor as yourself? I, I told you, you what I require. I require you to love me with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself. That means that if it, what you disrespecting and mistreating your spouse, is that how you feel about yourself? Because that's not how I taught you to love. That's not how I, I love you. So the same grace that you want God to give you, that's the same grace you give to your spouse. That's the same grace you give to your kids. That's the same grace you give to your fellow man. There's no, there's no, there's no difference, guys. We think that we can honor people on based on certain levels or titles or what certain functions you gotta the bible says when he says love your neighbor as yourself he's talking about everyone and so i need to pray for my partner not talk at her throw shots at her to god nor to other people if I'm talking, if I have a problem with my spouse, that's, I need to talk to my spouse, God, and a counselor. Not put other people in our business, in our relationship, who cannot help us, who are only going to either laugh at us or spread our business abroad and talk about us and tell our business. I need to pray for my partner. I need to build them up. I need, they need to know that, that I am interceding for them. They need to know that I give everything for them, that, that I talk to God about them in a wonderful way, that I talk about them to, in public in a wonderful way, that it's the same at home and abroad. I'm not pretending to be on your team at home and then get abroad and then throw shots at you and throw darts at you every chance I get when we're in conversation 
around other people. You should never put your spouse down around other people. You never take shots at your spouse in front of other people or your children. You should only build your spouse. If your spouse is doing something wrong, then you need to pull them to the side in private with them and God and you know you in your conversations and and you let them know, hey, this is making me feel this way or this is making me feel that way. But the most important thing is if you spend your time praying for one another, laughing with one another, communicating with one another, flirting with one another, dating, doing those things, just doing those things that are serving one another, you, you there's no, you, you leave no room for the enemy. How much do you laugh together? How much do you? Pray together. Do you even read your Bible? If you don't, then you won't know what to pray because we don't need to pray out of our feelings. We need to pray the word of God over our lives, over our spouse, over in when we pray. We need to pray the word and the will of God. The Bible says, it says you, when, when it talks about you ask amiss, that means that you're not praying the will of God. You're trying to pray something from your own desire that's not a, a godly desire. You're praying from a selfish desire. You're not asking something according to the will of God. Because if we don't read our Bible, we don't know the will of God. The Bible is to, is to tell me the mind of God. It's his words. It's his, every word in the scripture is inspired by God. Not just if it's in red. The entire scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So I need to know what his word says for me and for my life in order for me to be able to, for that to, to be, for my mind to be transformed by the will of God. And so that's what we need to do when we're praying for our partners. We need to love them and honor them. And so that when we do pray, we're praying the will of God for them. We're praying for them because we love them, not because we're mad at them, not because we think God needs to fix them. We're praying for them because we believe God. We married them. We chose them. We love them. We give them all that we have, and we're giving God all that we have because the marriage is the most, is the close, is the, the most important relationship on the earth. Marriage is the foundation of family. Family is the foundation of the world. That's why it's so important that you pray for your partner. Because you bring God glory. You bring loving a family and children into the world. And when you are in right relationship, when you, God and your spouse, are that three-court strand, then you bring children into the world that understand how to do the same thing. You've taught them how love and marriage is supposed to be. And so they grow up and they have a healthy marriage because you've taught them, right? They've seen it in front of them all their, their life. They've seen, they, they see you and your spouse talk and play and say, I love you and, and I miss you and, and I thank you and all those wonderful things that you should be saying to one another. Watch what you say. Watch what you do, because you're doing it unto the Lord. Pray for your partner. Pray the word of God to them, over them. Not what you feel, not giving the enemy uh, information and, and weapons against you. Pray what the word of God says about your spouse. And watch the difference. I'm going to check my chat here. And I don't, if I don't see anything. Hallelujah. I hope that uh, something I could say more, but I'll say less. I hope that something has been said this morning that has um, helped you to understand or see uh, if there's an area where you need to change something, do something different, uh, where, you know, you might need to um, correct some things. Guys, we all need to do a daily self-inventory. Make sure that we, our mind is, is on the right track. And if it's not, if, if I'm not reading my word. It's not. 
uh, because that, that's the daily bread that that I need to make sure that my mind is 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 God's lined up with God's mind that I have that my mind is constantly being uh, being transformed that is being washed of all those impurities those things that I see because we see TV we see conversations we see the news we see all these different actions and um, and most of those things are not building me most of those images are not good pleasant uh, imagery that we never know what's going to come across uh, the news screen most of it is they're reporting something negative um when we're watching different medias or whatever um they most of them are not promoting the things of god they are, people will share negative things a billion times and they won't even push share on the things of god and they they don't even realize people don't even realize if i'm going to share someone doing something negative but i won't share something that's that's of god that's denying christ so i'm going to post this crazy thing on my wall i'm going to share this through a text or through a social feed that somebody fighting or somebody getting a divorce or somebody um, shaming themselves but i don't i didn't share the the miracle i didn't share the 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 people singing worship or to god or someone uh giving a word of god preaching or whatever i don't share that but i'll share all the other stuff i'll make the devil go viral but i put god on silent mode when you're thinking of your spouse make sure that your words are life make sure that you're giving the enemy no place make sure that when you go to god he can have a conversation with you because you are honoring your spouse because he says clearly in his word if you are not honoring your spouse your prayers are hindered which means that he's not dealing with you he's not you you're not in in a, in right standing with him and you're not going to he's not going to release answers to your prayers until you get back in right standing with your spouse and honor them the way that he commands and tells us to he's not joking when he tells us husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church wives submit to your husband as in reverence them as you reverence the lord he's not joking that's not something that he wants you to do when you uh, feel like it. you do that immediately when you know that that's what he said we need to know that before we ever get married that needs to be part of marriage counseling that i need to know what marriage is and how do i pray for my spouse how do i love them how do i honor them how do i respect them how do i cherish them how do i adore them how do i build and keep trust how do i stay in this three court strand with them and god how do i honor god with my entire life that when i go to him to talk to him there's nothing that i'm i didn't leave some altercation with a brother or sister or my spouse or my children or a parent that's keeping me from having the conversation or the access that i need to have this conversation with god because the bible tells us clearly if you come bringing your offering if you come trying to talk to me trying to pray if you have aught with anyone you need to go get it right and then he says that if you're not honoring your spouse your prayers are hindered that's why we have to be keep our minds right by the word of god so that we our hearts are right and that we're thinking the right things towards our spouse and that we're making it easy to love us you you have to make it easy to love you i want it to be easy for my wife to 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 be around me i want it to be easy for her to have conversation with me to to do whatever it is that we need to do i want to make that so easy how being loving being honorable being kind being putting i mean always doing things that i know that i should and that's leaving no room for the enemy to say oh look at him then he get on your nerves we we have to make sure that we don't give the enemy place 
And if we're doing things that we should be doing, serving each other, loving each other, laughing together, praying together, flirting, dating, making lots of love, all these things, we're not leaving room. We talk, we communicate, we listen to each other. We respond to each other. We respect each other. If we're doing this, where is the room for the enemy to have you arguing? Where's the room for you to, to have a bad attitude when all you can think about is, wow, my, my spouse gives me everything. They go over and beyond for me every day. They, when they talk to me, I, I feel so respected. I feel so loved. I feel so secure. I feel so appreciated. Ooh, I can sleep so well because I know this person laying next to me, they love me. They love God with all their heart and they love me the same. Wow. Thank you, God, for this wonderful spouse. I could say more, but I'll say less. I hope that you have been tremendously blessed. We're going to uh, get ready to end the call for this day. Those of you, wherever you are watching, you're not here by accident. Those of you that are here, um, you spread the message. Uh, there's someone, there's some spouses, some friends, some neighbors, some relatives that, that need to know, uh, to be in on this conversation, that need to know how important it is for them to pray for their spouse, for them to be one. We come together to not to compete but to complete. That's what love does. Father, I thank you for allowing us to have this time. I thank you for how you love us and how you shown us how to give everything. And Lord, we thank you for spouses who, who love you. Our spouses are after your heart and they love us according to your word, your will, your command, Lord. And we thank you that our households are secure. We thank you that our households are under the covering of Psalm 91 covering. We thank you that our households are under the, the uh, Psalm 23 covering and every promise that you've spoken in your word over us, Lord. I thank you that you have wonderful plans for our family, for our, our marriages, our children, our, our destiny. Thank you, Lord, that we have whole marriages, Lord, that we, have, that we, are, we, are, we are in unity with you. We're in unity. We have become one. Thank you that our every part of our lives, Lord, faith, family, finance, and health is whole. There's, there's nothing lacking because you are our shepherd. Thank you, Lord. We ask that you would forgive us of any, any shortcomings, any sin in word, thought, or deed, Lord, anywhere we've dishonored one another and thereby dishonoring you. Lord, forgive us and Bring to our minds those things that we need to correct. Lord, correct us. We receive your correction. We receive your instruction. We receive your wisdom. Let, let our hearts be your heart. Our mind be your mind. Your spirit have rule in us, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you glory, Lord. We pray this for not only our household, Lord, but our neighbors, our family, everyone connected to us. We love you, Lord. We give you honor. And we want you to always look at us and, and say that you can trust us and that, that, that we are the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart, Lord, are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Because, Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. You are our refuge. We thank you that our family is wrapped in you. We love you, Lord. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you, but God loves you more. You guys have an awesome day, and we'll see you next time, next Tuesday. And if you have questions or comments, guys, and you see this video on YouTube, just pop your questions in that chat or your comments, your feedback. But the most important thing is let this word soak in you and share it with others so that they too can be blessed by what you've been blessed by. God bless you and keep you. I love all of you, but God loves you so much more. Have an awesome day. We'll see you next Tuesday.